In the minds of some Chinese men, wealth and status are blatant bargaining chips used for romance and courtship. This is a video that has recently gone viral on the Chinese internet. I want you to marry me. Wow. Please marry me, marry me. I really like you very much. I've known you for 100 days. Will you be with me? Marry him, marry him, marry him. I bought the car you like. Here you go. I can give you anything you want. I really like you. Don't force me. Listen to me, listen to me. I can give you anything you want. I've already bought the car. I can buy you anything you want. We don't fit, no. I don't like this. Don't fit. Sorry. I bought you a car. I have money. I have money. However many cars you want, I can buy them for you. You marry me. Don't go. You marry me, huh? I really can't take this. Things. Amidst the uproar, the young man, perhaps feeling humiliated, turned his anger towards the luxury car he had bought. And after being intercepted, he turned around and toppled the prize table he had set up. The young man vented his outrage on his own belongings after all, so it's not the worst yet. Let's take a look at a conversation between a small official and a woman. The location is a provincial capital city in the southwestern province of China in February of this year. It isn't clear under what context the two met, but the man surnamed Wang was clearly attracted to the woman and sent a courtship message on WeChat. I have feelings for you. You are elegant, feminine and sexy, making men's hormones rise. I don't want to hide it anymore. Being mild is just the image I have cultivated in the workplace. The woman's response was clear, saying that the two sides weren't suitable. She wrote, I've made it clear, doing so will save you the energy and time. The man didn't want to give up. He continued, One doesn't know if the shoe fits until one puts them on. Why not try them on first? What if they fit? The girl probably tried to control her anger and responded again in a simple and clear way. But you are not my type. The small official obviously didn't expect this kind of blow and his retort was, Your reply hurt my self-esteem a bit, but it's up to you. The girls who came to the Cultural Tourism Bureau this morning to make copies had to line up to see me. Their fair looks were similar to yours, but now, in this society, a rabbit doesn't eat the grass by its own burrow. Considering my own image, I don't want to approach them. Last year, in my workplace, when we did recruitment, 100 people were applying, and more than 60 of them were postgraduates, including one doctoral student. The selection process was complicated. One girl was a postgraduate, but she still needed to run errands for me and assist me starting from the basics. He also posted two pictures stating, Most of the people listening to my lecture here are college graduates who are in charge of corporate finance. As the woman remained silent and let him go on showing off, this civil servant continued, those of you who can become the love interest of us city officials will have to wait for the moment when we are absolutely sure. Who knows who is picking whom? I am a low-profile person in society with a cautious image and a seemingly good person. But it doesn't mean that I am in a low class. There are many girls who are 1.6 meters tall and well-groomed waiting for us to choose from. He he, who's picking whom is yet unknown. In case the lady didn't understand what he was talking about, he went on to explain the benefits of being a government official. It's your good fortune to meet us, the kind of city cadre that has no life pressure and lives a relaxed and pleasurable life. On your own, you will never make it in the city, even to your retirement age. It's believed that the girl on the other end of the cell phone felt insulted and posted the conversation online. After the official's name was revealed, several departments of the city government, which have staff with the same name, explained to the media that the department didn't have this web celebrity. The reporter eventually located a person in charge of a regional statistics bureau to inquire about the matter. 
The person in charge said their office did have a staff member surnamed Wang. The workplace had got involved in the matter and the results of the investigation would be announced to the public in a timely manner. Many Chinese netizens believe that the Wang official is actually telling the truth. In China, officials holding iron rice bowls are indeed superior to others, and their attitude naturally comes out in the dating scenes. Women have been sharing their feelings after blind dates with government officials or with wealthy individuals. On March 10, 2023, a girl posted online her dating experience. Her parents put her WeChat information on the matchmaking platform and a parent added her. It was the mother of the boy who came to check out the girl and see if she was a match for her son. The girl wrote during the communication that the mother was really rude in her language. She politely said, Your child is very nice, but we don't fit. So the mother responded angrily, You don't fancy my son? He works at a place that's a provincial rank level. The provincial level is indeed a relatively high level organization, but it isn't clear what level of bureaucrat this son belongs to in his organization. The girl wrote, I really want to tell her straight, my refusal and your son's workplace aren't related at all. In fact, I'm just not happy with you. Another woman wrote about her dating experience, concluding, I thought I loved money, but after the blind date, I realize I don't love money that much. The news also sparked a discussion concerning the status of civil servants in the marriage market. On the Chinese website Jihu, the equivalent of Quora, there is a question. Are civil servants popular in the dating market? Some people concluded that male civil servants from middle class families and above are the royal bomb of the dating market in any city, i.e. the most powerful and unmatched. The sought after level can be described as meeting at least 100 different girls on blind dates over 52 weeks a year. In addition, male civil servants from ordinary families, the smaller the city, the more popular they are. Due to the lack of high-paying industries and positions, civil servants are the actual middle and high-income groups in the local area. At the same time, small cities are more sociable, so the average civil servants can accumulate a wide range of contacts and social resources, which offer a lot of convenience in terms of children's schooling, family visits to hospitals, and various affairs. In this response, which received over 1,000 likes, the author also wrote that male civil servants were popular because bars and nightclubs are places of entertainment, where in principle they try not to go. And as for cheating, don't even think about it, the cost is to lose their entire career. On this point, it should be said that the author is too optimistic, and that girls who are expecting to get married shouldn't believe such conclusions. Previously, we aired an episode on four sleeping beauties about the moral decay and chaotic relationships within the Chinese bureaucracy. Those kinds of stories continue to play out. One of the more recent stories to hit the Chinese web was this one. On February 21, 2023, the regional government of a city in Henan province issued a notice stating that the district had removed two people from their posts on the afternoon of January 18th in response to a rumor that an official surnamed Guo had posted indecent information on the internet. The incident started with a screenshot of a chat log that official Guo was going to send to his mistress, a woman surnamed Zhang, who was also a civil servant and one level below him. Guo accidentally sent the message to a work group of over 100 people by mistake. The male official asked the mistress if her husband had made any more fuss about the two getting a hotel room. Guo threatened that even if people in the district were to know about this matter, he wasn't afraid and could set things straight. He also said that the leadership was ready to promote him and he could join forces with Mrs. Zhang in the future and then all the district's projects would virtually be owned by the two of them. Finally, the male official cautioned the mistress that the body belonged to him alone and that she was not allowed to get intimate with her husband. Following this text was a video that was 6 minutes and 40 seconds long. The video, which has been exposed in its entirety on the Chinese web, contains a recording from a car recorder between Guo and Zhang chatting in the car. The video shows a comment from the mistress that surprised netizens. The female official was saying, Everyone thinks I'm using you, but I think it's my husband who's using me. Netizen speculated that the husband of the female official was using the incident to gain interest or an official position. 
Considering the whole event, it isn't that the official was careless. There were simply too many things like this in the Chinese officialdom that some of them are bound to be leaked on the internet, and they keep coming. Under the rule and direction of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, China's traditional culture and moral ethics have been completely destroyed. Normal love and marriage are perverted to a terrible degree by money and power. The Chinese people have to support a massive group of officials led by the CCP's rich and powerful. These officials are supposedly the servants of the people with a slogan to serve the people. But in reality, they have long been superior to the people, accustomed to overwhelming others with power and possessing an arrogant air. According to what was said by the male official in this episode, after the blind date, we are the ones who are free from stress and live comfortably, while you are the ones who won't be able to make it even till the retirement. This kind of expressions have gradually made the Chinese people distinguish who is we and who is you. We've played this speech about we and you in a previous program, and we're including it again here for those who haven't heard it yet. You are you, we are we. Don't you always see we or us? We don't have an inch of the land of our own. What is it that you want me to protect? We have no pensions, no health care, and no housing of our own. When our children go to school, they have to first show a real estate certificate, go to a certain school district, and pay all kinds of fees. We don't have special supplies. We don't have resources or production materials. We don't even have a place where we can sell stuff to make some money. During three years of the epidemic, we were forced to take toxic vaccines. We have no source of income, and you never even provided us with a mask. We have no background. We can't afford to be hospitalized, and we can't even get cremated. You don't care about our lives, so don't always say we or us. We are we, you are you. You only think of us when you need human rights and want us to have babies, or when you need people to donate blood, or when you are about to start a war. Why not have your children go? We won't go. Who are we defending? Which special group of people are we defending? Do we need to defend a life where we have no roof over our heads and no land belongs to us? Do we need to defend the hopeless life that we live? Besides, it's not us they are targeting. It's you, Chinese Communist Party. Let your children and grandchildren come back from all over the world and fight in the war for you.